1795, Antonio Garcia Martinez. Uh, like, I don't know. It's Hold he, on. Can we just say this? I know what you're going to say. I don't know if you know what I'm going to say. I think I might. How about this? I'll try. And if I'm wrong, you get to say it anyway. I think he was just excited <laughs> to be there. Because a lot of the stuff he was talking about was really serious. And he was, like, jovial about it. No, I think he's a douchebag. Oh, he's probably that I, I think he's a total douchebag. Are we talking about the smiling? The laughing and the smiling? Yeah, yeah. Well, that's just what I was talking nodding to, like... Yeah. yeah, so it controls people. Like, yeah, yeah, what are you going to do? Like, he had a lot of yeah, yeahs, what we're going... Because he was there because he wrote a book called Chaos Monkey. Yeah. That got him canceled from Apple. Yeah. Which he so. seemed pretty fine about. <sighs> okay, am I wrong? And was here for the book, but just happened. I, I, I'd like to know if he knew he was going... On um, Rogan, so decide just to hop over to Ukraine. Like this guy has means. He seems like he, I'm just this little guy who just bought five acres of islands. You know? Like he's very well off. Correct? Of course he is. He wrote. He wrote a successful advertising algorithm well, he, for Facebook. He, he helped. He was instrumental in ru the ruining of our lives. And he would like to talk about anything. But what he did, I found. So he went to Ukraine. So we'll just talk about the war in Ukraine, which I, they act like Ukraine. He, he could have just not gone on the show. They, well, no, everyone's going to, he's the, he's the guy that would go on the show though. But are you, uh, is your argument that they didn't talk enough about, because I felt like they gave that topic enough time. Oh, it's not that they gave enough time. He doesn't know what he's talking about or. He's talking like an idiot. He said he was going to try to zoom from Ukraine. He wanted to pull that stunt off, right? What stunt? He said, I went to Ukraine. I was hoping we could do this by zoom. Oh, I see. Like gotcha. He wanted the more fucking clout, like live from Kiev or wherever he was. If he's on the, I apologize to my Ukrainian friends. But the point being, he's acting like Ukraine is just fighting this war, like by themselves. And like, it's just so, so inspiring. But that's not the case at all. Like, they have so much weapons given to them. You know, if the world wasn't intervening right now, like it's like a proxy war, Ukraine would be Russia. It isn't what it seems. So do you think the Afghans in the 80s were... Like, because they had a They ton got of the weapons from the Americans as well. I know. I'm, they gave them the Dimitri Dean is, to fight the Russians. This is why I'm mentioning it. So do you think, but this is my question. You think that the Afghans would have been able to fight the Russians had they not given them anything? Not no, that I'm saying I, it's right. I don't know. I think that area is just like theirs. Like, it's just so hard to, like, they're talking about, um, they don't think they could... Um, occupy this place but i i just think it's they're fighting against canada u.s like the russians are the resources yeah like i agree yeah. and and they're they're in a headlock and so but it is it, it, it the, the the u.s is totally intervening here but he seemed like just and you know what here no one cares they maybe don't realize their um money's going to fight this war and the ukrainian people are just um what do you call when they storm the beach like cannon fodder for them to wage this pre pressure war like joe biden said the other day you know this could go on for months remember when george bush said that about afghanistan yeah but that was different they were like it was them that were in but, afghanistan but it was a speech where it's like the war on terror is going to take years like, like this isn't, we're not going to be able to accomplish in three months. And it, it, we turned out to be 20 years. And Joe Biden yeah, but now is, no, but the Americans, So do you just think this is another war that... But hold on, there's no Like Americans, the Americans are setting up so they can sell guns for the next 20 years? 100%. And you think that this war will just go on for a long time, forever? So, like he said, he's not a betting man, but there's going to be a deal eventually. This is going to work out like the hockey strike, where they held out... No one watched hockey, and they ended up losing money. Everyone's losing, but this is be when this be resolved. I, I still don't think it's World War Three stuff. I'm also confused. Do you think the Americans have trouble selling guns? Uh, no. Uh, the, the, like, it'd be more interesting if Ukraine was buying all these weapons, but it's just aid. Like, it's you just give them missiles. Yeah, but someone still pays for that. 
You're Amer- acting as if Americans aid are, is free. Americans are paying for that. Yeah, I understand that. But what about... Yeah. I, <laughs> how do I say this? Oh, whatever. Keep going. They've given them like uh, 2,000 Javelin missiles. Yeah. So it's like 2,000 chance to destroy tanks. Mm-hmm. And over 2 billion aid plus whatever Europe's done, what we're done. It It is... The world is not standing by and watching Ukraine like fight for its life. The world is fighting with Ukraine against Russia, fight for the better. That that that's what he he was romanticizing that it's just Ukraine and it is amazing what they're going through. But they're it's a proxy war, right? I mean, he wasn't. He wasn't though. He spoke about all the propaganda on both sides. He spoke about the ghost of Kiev and like. Yeah. How that was all bullshit and a proxy war. So sorry. Let me just get this straight. So. Like the Americans fighting without having to fight. True, That's, yes. That may be true. And yet at the same time, the Ukrainians can still be fighting a righteous war for themselves. Can't they? Can't both things happen they at the same time? They wouldn't be able to fight this righteous war without America. Well, they might still try. Okay, but they, they would have. They would have failed by now. Like, so, like, yeah, I know. I, I'm just not sure what your point is. Well, I also want to know this. So, the, Kamar. If the Americans are allowing this to happen... Like if they did nothing, it'd be over and it'd be maybe worse or maybe less to be destroyed and just be a country under siege and we'd learn how to frame that moving on. So if Russia right? invades Canada, you would like the U.S. to do nothing? I, I would like to fight. And that's different. Okay. That's not, what? If, that's not my if question. If Russia invades uh, <laughs> Canada, we're part of NATO. They just attack the world. That's the one unique thing about Ukraine is it's not... A NATO country. I get it. But my point is, okay, let's say we were not in NATO. Would you expect the U.S. to not send us aid or help us? Can't say that. We are in NATO. Okay. If we're, if we're not... Hold on. You're acting like we not, don't play these games all the time on this show. Okay. If we're not in NATO, we would have to have spent a lot more on our military, like develop our own defenses. And then it would be a different story. And I don't know what the, the money be spent, but assuming we're not... Okay, but We're here. not part of NATO. We're not a partner of America. They're hostile. They'd be taking us over for Russia. I, I just think it's the world and Ukraine against Russia. Maybe India, Saudi Arabia, China, sort of like, let's not throw the baby out of the bathwater here. They're, they're sort of quiet, you know. If you see the sanctions against Russia, no one in Africa is caring about this. Why would anyone in Africa care about... Because we purport to care about wars. Like There's a big war in Ethiopia going on right now, but no one cares about that. I don't want to sound like Dave Smith, but also Saudi Arabia and Yemen is happening right now. And no one cares about that. And it's no different than what we are so fucking focused on. And they're talking about the gas prices going up more, food shortages. I really think this could be brokered out. Like I said a week ago, give crazy uh, concessions to Putin, help stabilize Ukraine. It could be, but they're, they're, choosing to keep this going kamar the irony is that you and dave smith um probably less dave smith but you guys are part of the problem like you harp on this a lot on on ukraine russia i don't hear i've never heard you mention ethiopian war before i've never so you are part of the problem in that you follow the news cycle so carefully that i'm just pointing out the the specific focus of attention there's no different but again, come on. When they were in Afghanistan, it was the same thing. There was a hunt. There was ten wars going on. Everyone should have been sanctioning America for that. Yeah. Do you know they're giving? Uh, they're taking Afghan money and giving it to nine eleven survivors. Well, let me ask you this. So Russia, like Russia, probably won't be able to take part in the World Cup in oh, November, man, right? In anything? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So my question to you is like, if the U.S. were to go back into a country like Afghanistan, would the U.S. then be? asked not to participate in the world cup they they, they should if if we follow suit here i agree yeah. with our morals stance yeah I that's agree. all that's all i'm saying and i just thought i didn't hear that from him but, it's but more, us too we're no better i'm not saying and, I'm, I'm and if you want to talk about the hypocrisy that um the exact same thing is going on in yemen and nobody gives a fuck like i I'm happy to entertain that argument. Like I'm, I'm with you there. You know what I mean? But I don't see how that lessens what's going on for the people of we Ukraine. Are, because this war is continuing, we all as a planet are going to suffer. At the grocery store, at the gas pump. This doesn't... 
I, one good thing is because they're shutting off oil, we're going to start producing more oil here in Canada to try to uh, I under- help out, which we don't want to <laughs> do because we're trying to See, stop oil. This is where I disagree with you. <clears throat> Gas and the price of everything going up, this was inevitable. Oh, this has nothing to do with this the war, but they're telling you that th- this is the sure. war's cause of it. The food shortage, the the um, all the fertilizer that Sadiq talked about coming from Russia, that's not like there are going to be more problems from this and it doesn't have to be no more people have to die this could be brokered that's that's what i'm insisting and it's it's being led to burn out but how do you go to the table with putin just out of curiosity i know we said last exactly i know you said last wants. week you you strong arm him with a vladimir is that your name vladimir no <laughs> no no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I, yeah, I'm just saying, Kamar. It it my concern at this point is that that the guy in charge of Russia is old and angry and bitter and probably like Biden, not quite there. I mean, he seems more there in the sense that like, you know, he's a, a more fit, like he's still riding it's horses and shit. Yeah, but again, he's an old man who's been through a lot and it has. I can't imagine how many chips on his shoulder. Like, imagine having all your food tested for the last forty years. Like you can never just fucking eat. You can never just take a bottle of booze. From- at any point, that's why I said the 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 way to stop Vladimir is to give him mushrooms. But at any other point, he's like, I have to take all these steps to stay alive. Is it me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do I? Is it me or do people not like me? Like that's it. Like I. Is it them or me? You know, and I'm not saying I feel bad for the guy. He's put himself in this fucking scenario. I don't feel bad for him. No, he's God, no. he's probably murdered he's people, done shit. horrible stuff. Yeah, he is. He's a terrible guy. But the Russian populace is brainwashed. Like, but they're individuals like you or I, and I feel for them. Like, I don't feel like it's the cultures that, of Russia and Ukraine are fighting. Like, it's not even that they're brainwashed, Kamar. It's that they might genuinely feel like this guy has Russia's best interest. Yeah, and if they don't know any better, they're not. It doesn't make them bad people. I I agree, and I just feel bad for the the the, the individual Ukrainian and the individual Russian. I feel bad for innocent people that are dying. And I feel this is being prolonged by the American government. Either way, they either they either keep the weapons coming so it burns out or they stop, it's over, or they broker a deal, which I think I think they can do. And that's what's not being talked about in the news. Uh, it is by, you know, fringe people. Like I said, I just don't, I'm not certain they can broker a deal. And if they don't keep giving arms to Ukraine, Ukraine most likely just gets run over, right? Imagine they had to buy these arms. Like you can, You're forgetting. They do. They just pay for them with a different currency. Like you obviously know that there's like these Wuhan labs. There's t- two or three of them in Ukraine that are U.S. run, right? Bio facilities. You guys know this. That's There's a reason for that. The U.S. is like, look, we're going to give you arms. And in return, you're going to do a lot of the shit that we don't want to do on our soil or on. And that's it. It's. But if the world was just like a place where everyone let everyone be, this would just happen. And we all sort of be like, not, not intervening in the war. The problem, Kamar, with that is like, let's just use a, let's use a scenario with people. Okay. The three of us are in this room and some dude walks in and he starts fucking bullying Simon. And he's like, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Well, no, I'm just some, some guy comes in and starts bullying Simon. If we just let it happen. So what's your answer to the Holocaust? I'm so interested. Like, so all these people, they just decided, whoa, hold on. Hitler just decided no good. I'm going to just do this. What if nobody did? What if nobody did anything? Yeah. No one did anything. They won, they won the war and then found out about the Holocaust. They won the war and then as the Germans receded, they found the Holocaust. Oh. They did not know. It, it, it wasn't that. It, yeah, but hold on. Hold they on. didn't go wait, in wait, wait, wait. to okay. save war, the Jews. War is for money. Hold on. Stop. War stop, stop. is for money, not for... Uh... Okay, no, no, no. Let me, let me stop you there. Okay, again, I'll go back to my bully scenario. If we see some guy come in here and pick on Simon, and he just robs Simon in front of us and we just let it happen, yeah. there's nothing in my mind to say, hey, the next time this guy shows up, he might pick me and these two guys are going to do the same nothing. Yeah. Whereas if I say, hey, fuck this, the three of us can outweigh this guy. Yeah. He's not doing shit to Simon. That works. That's kind of, it's yeah. a checks and balances. Those, and hold on, yeah. just let me finish though. With Germany, they were like these, they were in France. They were moving the fucking line. They were through Poland. They had taken over like how many countries. 
At that point, the U.S. had to be like, we have a fucking serious problem on our hands here. This guy's a psychopath. He's made it clear. I agree. There was no Holocaust. No. He had well, always whether made... they were coming over to save the Jews or not, they were coming over to stop a bully. Yeah, and yeah, and, and, and but, but more who... so. Hold on, more so. They they didn't know about the Holocaust. Hitler had made his fucking plan clear. <clears throat> they might not have known about concentration camps. They knew what this guy was saying. They knew they he made speeches about eradicating this anybody who saying. didn't and look you know like his people. You know who what I'm sacrificed saying. the most to win that war? The Canadians, Russia, Russia. Okay, again. So they should be our friends. I'm not saying that you brought it up. I'm saying, and in that situation, we well, were allies. But, I agree, but we but are far you, removed from that time now. And just because and happened if your friend is years? a bully and he's bullying someone, I would expect you to step up even more because he's your friend than if it was I a know, stranger. But we already painted Kamar, the examples of years. hypocrisy where we're not. Look, I get it, Kamar. It. I'm not saying I'm not saying Why that the Americans are are. The, their government does terrible things, okay? I'm not saying that they don't. It doesn't mean that this case is just. You think I'm saying Putin is just to invade Ukraine? I don't know what you're saying no, at this he's point. Not. I I'm, really don't. I'm just saying it, it, it could be resolved. It, it, this is being allowed to happen. You're, okay, hold on a second. It will be resolved by them giving up a piece of land. Or... Russia somehow, which no one thinks they can, lasts another week. Like they they have no more supplies because they're so cut off, and and they run out. I mean, I guess that's going to happen. No, we're, we're, I don't it, even know what you're talking. We're talking about if they came to the table and made a deal. Yeah. Right. Like, what does Russia want? What does Ukraine want? Where can they meet in the in the middle to make each other happy? Yeah. You seem to think that that can be accomplished. Yeah. But it's not. What What is it? What's that middle ground there? Just giving Donbass to Russia? Recognizing Crimea and uh, no... And what does Ukraine get? Nothing Cash because... money from the world. Okay. okay, what do they get from Russia? Because it has to be a tit for tat. A promise not to invade ever again? Like, I mean, this the other thing, these packs they make. And you hear Putin put out a rest warrant for George Soros? <laughs> There's a lot of moving parts. <laughs> Sorry, I, I'm just trying to keep up. Um, Let's get back to the guest, though. We got lost in Ukraine. Sure. Uh, well, I mean, Ukraine was a big part of this. He's becoming a uh, take on uh, Judaism. He's becoming a Jew. He's becoming a Jew. He's converting. Yeah. Uh, on behalf of his uh, baby mama to his third kid. I was happy that Joe said it because I was in the car listening to this, and I was like, clearly, this guy's got a type. But. He should not be using baby mama, my third kid. Like, he's a, he's a douchebag, I think, with women. <laughs> he definitely does like Jewish girls. No, he really likes yeah. Jewish girls. Isn't that such a... Well, and knocking such a, them up and then um, getting tired of them and going to the next one. I, I, talks I, about the beautiful melting pot of North America where this Cuban guy can come and all of a sudden he's got a Jew thing. It's so interesting. I think he's a philanderer. Yeah, <laughs> probably seemed like it. But he's the enemy. Do you think he was really laughing during like all those terrible conversations, or was he? I said this up the jump. Yeah, I no, he I was, know. I think nerves. Or was it like a nervous? I think kick. it was nerves laughing. and excitement. He's a douchebag. Okay, I'm gonna give him the benefit of that. I think he was a douchebag as well. But okay, as far yeah, as the that, laughing, that's something there. There's something there. This fucking guy. No, I don't know. I don't know about the give, laughing either. You can't either. give Kamar an inch. I he thought, takes a fucking I thought mile. about it the whole episode. He's a douche fucking bag. Um, <laughs> he starts interviewing Joe. Like, did you ever think? Like, and we know, we know that's a that's a red flag. When the guest starts interviewing Joe, and you know Joe loves talking about how he's just perfected the art of conversation. And it's just, I don't know, sometimes he gets so good at something. Why don't we talk about ads for a sec? Because that's that was pretty much why this guy was on, right? Yeah, yeah. So do you believe him? He... That they're not listening to you? Well, I thought that was a very interesting... words? I thought that was a very interesting point he brought up. That for your phone to be listening to you... He de denies microphone. What do you targeting. mean? What did he say? Because I, I totally disagreed with him. Okay, what he said was this. The amount of data that you have to take in um, to listen to your phone all the time, 24-7. Like, for example, like 
when you hear the NSA is doing that, the amount of data that they are pulling in of metadata is I mean, I guess, you, yeah, but you don't, you don't think that you don't think they can just write an algorithm I'll where go. every time they hear a hundred keywords, Matt, you get an ad for it. Every time you, you say the word, um, fuck, I don't know. Hamster in my ass. No. Every time you say the word hamburger, you get an ad for McDonald's, like whatever, you know? And they just, it doesn't have to be for everything you say. It's for whoever's willing to pay the price. What's really funny to me is that neither of us could write a single line of code. Not one of the three of us could write a single line of code. Yet we're talking about algorithms like we know how they're written, how they work. I, just, <laughs> I know they exist. Yeah, I know, and yep, I know they're geared at manipulating us. This seems like a really easy way to do it. Listen, what he was saying was, how often are you speaking where you're like, you're going to say something so specific to an advertiser? Like, Why again, does it have to be so specific? That is my point. It could be as simple, Matt, yes, like as in a car. I understand what you're one saying. One keyword. Yeah, I get it. You're, you, most of the time, you're not even going to notice that you even got an ad. That's the whole thing. How about this? I can explain this to you better. It's you're losing. You're actually losing so much by doing that because like he said, the amount of data and the amount of money that it costs to do that versus like, if you say car, if you and I are ever having a conversation about a car and then we both get blasted with ads for cars, they pay for those ads. They paid for the algorithm. They paid for all of that. All that is money. And just because we're having a conversation about cars, we might not. So they don't make it that they make it a little, it's if you said Honda Accord or whatever, man, Listen, like you said, we don't write code, but I assume they can do just about anything. I would put it to you this way. I believe more that Google, not your phone, that Google and certain apps, because here's the thing, when you, let's, let's use Instagram as an example. Okay. I have to download Instagram every time I use it. Cause I delete it every time I'm done using it. When I re-download it, it's like, you have to give us access to the camera and we have to get access to the microphone. You can't post anything. The second you give them access to that microphone, what you don't realize is that when you hit accept, you gave them carte blanche to listen to everything. So that's a different story. Like I'm saying Apple themselves as a phone. Yeah. Okay. I don't think it's Apple as a phone either. I think it would be, I think there are certain apps, companies who deep. are trying to sell you things. Listen, potentially when he was talking about Facebook, I was like, I, I believe Facebook within their app could be doing exactly what you're talking about, but I think that's within apps. And that's also, that's a very interesting point that he brought up too. When he said, you got to realize Facebook at the end of the day, is just another fucking app in the app store. That's what hit me the most is I was like, Facebook is really nothing without Apple and Google. You can't touch it. Well, the metaverse. Mm. No, what I'm just saying is without those, without the device, without these companies. And that's why Apple is so big. Well, and that's, this was the latest episode of that Uber show is because they want to kick him off of the app store. Because like I said, he wrote an algorithm so he could bypass, yeah, bypass something because they can do whatever they want, Matt, yeah. because they're algo guys. But, um, <laughs> fuck you. Simon. Yeah, no, but that if, if Apple at that point had said, um, we don't want you yeah, in your app gone. store anymore, they don't exist anymore, but this is so interesting. And I don't know if this is true, but I assume it's true because they're using everybody's real names and everything. He has this meeting with, um, Tim, Tim cook, Tim cook, and then the right hand man to Tim cook. And, um, they end up letting him stay on the app store. Like they call him out on all his shit. Then they let him stay in the app store and then spoil alert. They, he's like, uh, Apple says, Oh, and by the way, we just invested $13 trillion or whatever into your competitor in China. You'll never be in China. And if you ever fuck with us again, we'll do the exact Man, same thing in gone. every other space you own. Like he just, I don't know what happens after that, but edge of my seat. But that, that's what I'm saying is like, that was eye opening for me because you always think about, we always talk about Facebook, like they're this massive and they are, it's a huge company. I'm it's not denying Instagram that. Instagram and WhatsApp. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. I'm not denying the size of Facebook as a company. I'm not doing that at all. I'm not trying to diminish their power in the space. I'm not trying to diminish their hold on the market. I'm not trying to do any of that. What I am saying though, is it's eye opening that yes, at the end of the day, we're all they a are, farmer and they are just field. an app store on someone else's platform. <laughs> And those guys are the ones with the real fucking power. And we're actually in a way lucky that Apple operates the way they do because they could be raping us fucking blind. We're all happy that we've chosen to use Apple. 
I mean, again, I think they're still a terrible company. Slaves make our phones. Let's not give Apple a fucking pass. Well, speaking of, Joe professed his love of Jeff Bezos. That was oh, the weirdest. Okay. Thing. This I, is the weirdest I'm moment. I'm so sick of this. This was the we hold on. This was the weirdest moment, maybe in three years of doing this show. This was the weirdest thing I've heard Joe say. Well, I think it's pretty obvious, Matt. Joe is planning on Joe building a giant yacht, and he's gonna have to take a couple of bridges apart, and he's just fucking international waters. <laughs> Like, what or, the fuck? What, what is he talking about? I think he knows what he's doing. And I'll, let me explain it. I just thought of this. Joe's contract is going to be up soon. It's in September, right? Two years is up. He wants to go to Amazon? Well, I'm just saying Amazon's throwing money around like it's no one's fucking business. Amazon is trying to get into the podcast space. And he'll probably get a free ride to space. Might get a free yacht. Maybe or, they have to take down the bridge anyway. Sorry. Upper atmosphere. Well, no, he'd send Eddie up. That, that's the whole thing, right? He'd have to send Eddie up. To prove it. Oh my God. Gotcha. That'd be the end of the world. That would be the end of the world. <laughs> if a year, within a year from now, well, when did you say his contract's ending? I believe it's in September. He had two years on Spotify, correct? Starting so September three, 9th. Three years on Was Spotify, it three? Yeah. Okay, then it's a year and a bit so away. So a year from September, if Joe goes to space, <laughs> Jeff Bezos. And Tom Cruise. Just, we're, we're done. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm walking out. I said, I'm sorry. I, I, I'm so, it's like, it's getting to the level of Scientology. You know, when you pay so much money to open the book, you're like, what? You know that story you've heard? You actually like Elon Musk? <laughs> I just couldn't. I thought this was a fucking <clears throat> trick. It's just such a, it was so weird to hear him be like. I mean, his, his business might be like harsh or whatever, but I mean, you want to work someplace and this, it was, he whitewashed him, man. Well, here's the other thing too. Joe said, I've never looked into his business practices. I was like, Joe, you are a human being living in the United States of America. You have heard. I heard they treat their <laughs> warehouse employees pretty shitty. Like, what are we? I was like, Joe, come on, man. Get, you know the company Skynet, the one that's going to take over the world? <laughs> yeah, I couldn't. I, I was. So, that's my side gig. I was so blown away by this. this no, whole I was totally blown away. Like so much that I said, this has got to be a bit. Again, like Ali Sadiq. I was no like bit. The, I was like the bit. No, that coming. was a paid for. Like, <laughs> you know, he just sleep, seamlessly put the, brought to you by Amazon. Dude, Look, it feels like, it feel, you're right. It feels like Amazon's going to clip that and have coming 2025. You know what I mean? Like, great guy. Great guy. <laughs> <laughs> Love his style. Look at that um, shirt. Joe talked about hard it's jobs. Crazy. Would... <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't mean. Like, Joe is so fucking out of touch. Ah, yes, Can he not? Yes. This is the craziest. Shit. First of all, you are one of these guys, Joe. I mean, you're not a billionaire, but as far as, like, power goes, if we could tra translate power yes. into money, he's in the conversation. He's worth a billion dollars Listen, right now. He is you now... think Joe is worth a billion dollars? So oh, power-wise. Uh, no, like, within the next 10 years, he would have a billion dollars if he continues on the... Um trajectory yeah that he's on now joe rogan is now invited to the billionaire part he doesn't get to go in the house but he gets to hang out at There's the garden the pool the yeah yeah but he's he's at the he garden gets to party. do a 15 minute set <laughs> with his shoes off <laughs> anyway let's keep going sorry uh, i'm sorry yeah I, I don't mean to harp on this but I yeah just it. so out of touch <laughs> so out of touch joe joe talked about uh <laughs> shitty jobs that made him appreciate like like yeah, putting up with the shop. And he was like, "Well, yeah, um, I was forced to row." <laughs> <laughs> he, he couldn't say that one summer as a busboy at a shitty restaurant. He was forced to row. This guy was a fucking douche. I love to force. No one forced you to row. Apple. Did he mean row from like Cuba to the states? <laughs> <laughs> no, row at his Ivy League school. Um, he was on a fucking door. <laughs> Elon. Well, that's way more admirable than I being agree. like the guy at the front of the uh, <laughs> thing, the coxman. <laughs> go, go, go. That's what he was. That's what he's forced to do. Imagine that. I don't know. Elon versus Putin. They talked about also in Monty Franklin. What are we doing here again? That'd Joe be awesome, is nuts. Right? Joe awesome. thinks, hold on. Joe genuinely thinks Elon has a chance in this fight. I think he what does. What are we fucking doing? I think he does. I think Elon Musk has taken courses with every fucking Krav Maga, like specialists you can imagine the same way um this guy was in the fucking kgb i know but he's he is bigger and if this rules first of all he there takes would be poison There'd your be a small... ring and calls <laughs> yeah. it his ring 
So, Elon isn't doing that. So you guys are calling, you put all your money. I would put all my, yeah. It? Dude, I would mortgage, <laughs> I'd mortgage my house. I'd get the bank to mortgage <laughs> Simon's house. I. <laughs> Wow. Well, nuts? Elon was Wait, busy trying to figure out like the trajectory of the punch. Putin would eat his throat. And this I mean is, that literally. At, this is this is worst, best case scenario for Elon. He beats him, but Putin has put a small amount of poison on his neck, which Elon has come in contact with. And Elon walks away the victor, but dies two hours later. Like Because he's such a piece of shit, there's no way you can have a fair fight with Putin. Well, first of all, is Elon's argument that he's going to fly to Russia? To fight the president of the oh they'd have to do it on, on a boat it'd have to be on a, a international, ship, waters. international waters yeah, yeah like sea biscuit sure. versus mike tyson Some of that. Yeah. Like, you know how florida they bring all their boats up or like yeah, yeah regatta or whatever but it said this is like six billion dollar yachts yeah, yeah it's all just super yachts and they have a suspended platform with helicopters i love it between them. i'm so down he isn't very big though putin he, uh, they are correct about that. He's yeah, only 150 pounds, five six. And Joe's impression of Elon would be fucking awesome. Or what? I can't do it, but it was very spot on, very good. They were unsure about hypersonic missiles, which have been around since 2010. Okay, well that's not that long. 12 years. But the fears that is keeping Joe up at night has been there for the last 10 years. No, yeah, but we a, haven't been on the brink of war, I guess. Wearing a tie difference. is Joe's biggest fear. Well, still. His second biggest fear <laughs> is supersonic missiles. But obviously. he was like, if, if these things exist, like I'm like they, they, they do exist. They have exist. They've been tested. It's been this. Um... What Joe doesn't realize though, is like they would have to launch so many supersonic missiles for there not to be like Joe's Joe's thing is like that they're going to get attacked and not have time to attack back. You'd have to blow up all of the states. It's got mutually right? assured. Once, uh, someone has their finger on the button uh, yeah, in the yeah, states. Yeah. So once one bomb hits, there's someone somewhere remotely that's going to fucking hit all the buttons. Correct. I mean, yeah, I don't know how many places the U uh, S has to shoot missiles out of. I would assume every country in NATO, the U.S. has a nuke in. Well, that's according to Kamara. That's why, how, why they were trying to get into the Ukraine. Not to mention submarines. That is why. Submarines is the big one. Well, you don't, that's, we, you we, don't know where the fuck those are. We and, hunt red October. Yeah. The other weekend. That's that whole thing. That, yeah. And we all know we don't know anything about the ocean. There must be a crazy Russian base under the water with a crazy tube to bring <laughs> oxygen down or maybe maybe they have uh machines that process oxygen just from the seawater right there there has to be right this guy thinks there everyone's a bond what if villain? all those ufos are just like a, a russian um drone well didn't that lady with the sultry voice say that oh i wish i could remember her name annie Campbell. remember by the book yeah i do remember by the book. <laughs> am i right that was her right yeah, she was saying that the... She was, thought most UFO a, sightings were just Russian crap. There wasn't a Cold War or something? Was that were, her thing? No, they were trying to cover up the Cold War by saying it was aliens, right? right so whenever yeah. there was an alien sighting, it was actually a Russian craft or some Russian spy mm -hmm. plane or something. Mm -hmm. But she said it much more sultry than I But did. wouldn't they have used those already, especially if they're fighting a war right now? Wouldn't they just swoop in with their fancy UFOs and fucking... End it like that. Would you swoop in if you saw a war between two ants? Yeah, I'm not kill, saying I the aliens. Both. I'm saying if it's Russian technology, why aren't they using it right now as they fight a war? To win the UK war? Yeah. Because they can't let everyone know they have it. I don't know. Well, at some point, you're going to let people know if you need it. Uh, Martinez threw out flippantly that he bought a five, five acres of island that has a small meth problem. <laughs> <laughs> You know, that's like, yeah. I mean, I do heroin, but I don't do heroin. A small meth problem? Yeah, that could only be expanding. Because like, there was a point where there was no meth problem. Yeah. So any meth problem. Can only get worse. It doesn't tend to get better. <laughs> the whole neighborhood cleaned up. I didn't have a big <laughs> meth problem. It's just weird. He stood there with a gun on an island with a... I don't know. I don't, I don't know what this what, guy's up to. What are you talking... I thought he bought an island because he was yeah. building a house out there. And he something. said it has a small meth problem. Yeah, he, <laughs> went, to I take, don't, he went to take control of the island and he got there and there was some squatting meth heads. Meth heads, excuse me. 
I don't remember that at all. That's all he right. said he had a gun, and Joe couldn't understand because he was out in, I on an I island. I understood why you'd have a gun. Of course, you would have yeah. a gun because. But he was building a yurt, like he's doing. Like he was doing some pretty. Uh, these what he was describing as the behaviors of these guys. Yeah, he sounded like a tech. He, he sound, sounded like a tech bro. He said, "But I'm, I'm not a tech bro." Yeah. But I am but building a, tech, a but I am building a yurt on my five acre meth island. <laughs> he literally said, "You know, I tried to start up. Was that good? Sold it to Twitter. Like, not everyone does that. Like, you know, that thing we all do when we're tech bros. He was just such a tech bro. He Can I tell you the crazy story real quick? I worked with a guy at Barrymore's. He was a bouncer, one of the biggest bouncers there. Um, used to knock people out on the regular. I found out after like six months of working with him." that he was a genius and that he had written some program and sold it for like $2 million when he was 19. He was like, I just like, uh, I just like working at the bar. It was nuts. It's crazy. And he was like, I have, I invested it all. So I just work at the bar for like spare cash. But he's like, I'm pretty much retired. I have all the money to retire. I was like, that's fucking bananas. That would be a good way. If even if you didn't have that, you just start telling people that it's, they'd respect you more all of a sudden. You're like, look at the guy in a whole different way. It's true. But I mean, he really was that. But he talked about how yeah, that's an point. issue at these companies where we both worked for Facebook for three years, but I was the year the IPO. Yeah, that's yeah. so I'm worth more than $40, million. $40 million. Plus, <laughs> and you're my bot. Like, um, they're all, and he's one of these guys. Well, he used to be one of those guys. I'm sure he still is. Like, well, he's got, he signed a Substack deal and it's prorated. Like, he's just such a yeah. Dude. You're right. He dude, did listen, think about shame. someone like David Cho. <clears throat> David Cho did a mural there and ended up <laughs> filthy rich. Like, if you were literally around early doing anything, like when he was like, it's not like the janitors are getting rich. I'm like, and I don't know, were, bro. They were paying you in stock, thinking like, oh, we'll be out of business in two months. Yeah. This won't be worth <laughs> shit. But, yeah. but this happens at all tech companies. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So this is this would be uh this would be happening at Spotify, um, Microsoft. There's, like, there's a story about Alanis like that, I think, where some company couldn't pay her and she took stock. And she took stock and then they ended up like being Twitter. Well famously Jack Nicholson um, they couldn't afford to pay him for The Shining, so they offered him points, and he took the points, and he ended up making like sixty-five million dollars off that movie. All really, told. I'm surprised yeah. that that was like. A, I believe he also did it with the Joker, a blockbuster hit. Well, Kubrick again, like that was a Kubrick movie. You know, they were. He was a blockbuster, art. and he was coolest because he got Clockwork Orange banned. That was a banned movie. Banned where? I think only in England. Okay. But, but but he fought for it to bring more attention to it. And of course, we saw it. And that was one of the things they were talking about. Do you think the world would just lose his mind if it was uncensored? And there's just horrible stuff out there? Or would it just like burn itself out? Are we are we effectively helping ourselves by policing the internet? And I think the algo could take care of it. Because they keep saying, you need millions of people to do this. Or... I'll go. You know what's funny though is they always make this weird argument where they're like, "We'd have to hire millions of people," and it's then like, "Hire millions it's like, of people." Do you, we see your bottom line. People we, need jobs. Like, your bottom line is. It public. would still only be a percent. This of, is what I'm saying. Yeah. It doesn't make sense yeah. to me when they say that. I'm like, guys, guys, what the fuck are we doing here? Like, for like, like when they were like, "Well, we don't have a lot of Burmese speakers to to um, patrol our Burmese Facebook." It's like. They make a dollar a day over there. Are you telling me that this trillion dollar company? Pretty, uh, there's no, there's too. no argument because even if they said, "Well, where are we going to put the million people? Build, build a giant build warehouse like you do yeah, you, this to is store you your do. your yeah, robots." Campuses. Yeah, like, I don't get it. Are we protecting ourselves from madness, though? Look, just like anything else, just like anything else, you're allowed to drive, but the there exists a speed limit there are things in place because man cannot be left i mean humans cannot be left to just patrol ourselves there are too many people it doesn't work at scale so you need laws you need rules those have to exist on the internet it takes up this giant portion of our lives now our children are on it it like it has to be patrolled the same way the same way we allow 
ourselves to be patrolled by speed limits. You can still break it, but there are guidelines in place. Right now, there are no guidelines. Everybody just does whatever the fuck they want. Well, there is. Right? There's a bias sort of sure censorship it, model or or. Well, it's not good the way they're doing screening. it. But are we saving ourselves from madness? If Simon. Just everything was out there, would it just be like madness? To the speed limit one, I was going to back you up and say speed limits are in place for safety purposes so that we're not out there killing it's each other. physical. But I also then think, I'm like, well, Germany has the Autobahn, and I don't believe it's any less safe than any highway system we have over here. So to Kamar's point, there's kind of the argument that, like, if done correctly, there's a way to maybe up the speed limit, if that makes any sense. Again, I'm not saying that physical the speed limit has to be 100 or 1,000. There, but there have to be some rules in place. Otherwise, we end up living in chaos. I, and the Autobahn is only one highway. It's not all through Germany no, where it. there's no yeah, yeah. speed limit. I got a ticket in Germany, so I know. Fair enough. Listen, I just want to say this. I think, I think the internet should and does reflect the real world in that, like, right now, if we turn this off, the three of us could talk about anything. The three of us could have a conversation. There's nothing that the three of us, like, couldn't talk about and and walk away friends. You know what I mean? Like we could argue there's there's no topic that you could bring up where I'd be like, wow, Simon's a real piece of shit. Like it's I mean, I guess there is. There's a few, but it's very few. Like we could all have a conversation here. You wouldn't have that conversation at work. And there's certain people you wouldn't have that conversation. My point though is like the internet is kind of like that in a way. And I'm okay with that. It doesn't have to be like I'm with you where certain things should be um patrolled in a way and then there should be a wild west in certain areas because i think what kamar is saying like i think to censor people we're just burying our heads in the sand like if you one leaf at a time like let's say you censor racism which we try to do it's not like it doesn't exist out there it still exists out there and then when you run into it you're so fucking shocked because you're like oh i live in this dream world where there's no racism and in the world there exists a lot of shitty people and racism and bad stuff and you have to get used to encountering it because you're going to encounter it in your fucking day-to-day -day life. And I think the more used to it you get, I'm not saying it's great, but I'm saying we're probably going to fix it. We're more likely to fix it by not censoring it than we are by just acting like it doesn't exist. Wow. You grew. What do you mean I grew? You just said you agreed with me. Oh. You, I, you grew you, on, you were like, I sort of agree that it's got to be that he, listen, the, he's against banning The stuff. majority of the rules need to be on the companies not on the people but here but, Simon, but there still have to be there have to be rules man. yeah yeah but it my cannot point, just be the wild west this isn't the wild west simon my point was it's just, not working but simon my point was just like i was saying when you're around two good friends you can talk about anything you can shoot the shit there's nothing that's really there awful. are still things that people could say to you yes that, that could offend you that's not what i'm saying i'm not saying you can't get offended what i'm saying though is like the conversations we could have here, you couldn't have at work. There's certain places where you just couldn't have them or wouldn't have them. Or you couldn't have them on stage. Sure, yeah. But yeah, you're... so because there's a certain decorum. But that's what I'm not saying. Not everybody is... wants to listen to your point of view all the time, right? Well, no one wants to listen to my point of view. That doesn't matter. Well, that's why you do this podcast. Precisely, so no one can listen to it <laughs> out in the wild. Either way, I don't know. I, Kamar, there's no answer. We're never going to get it right. One of his big that? things he kept going was like, well, you know, this pays for the internet. This pays for the internet. This pays for the internet. I mean, he's not wrong. If it wasn't for this, you would have the internet. So what, what are you going to do? That, oh, dude, I'm so sick of that argument too. Because mo like I said, most of these rules should be in place of these companies. Look, they nobody's saying you cannot advertise. Advertise your fucking hearts out. That's how you're going to make your money, right? You're selling ad spot. Hello? Sure, yeah. But you don't need to have fucking algorithms that exploit us and make us go play. Just use your average. You know what I'm saying? Just show your ads. What he said, he said it was the term of art is uh, lookalike audiences. So when you search something, then you search something and see, oh, you guys have talked before. Okay. And that's what he's like. But he's speaking to it. Uh, he goes, my job is to turn eyeballs into money. He did not want to talk about who he really was. Like Instagram to me is the one that gets away with the most bullshit because That's everybody's Facebook. like, oh, Instagram's so great. It's so great. My feed has been so hijacked. It doesn't even make sense anymore. But because it isn't bad, meaning like there's nothing that offends me on there. I just, 
keep Put going. Every once in a while, I'll see somebody I follow. But for the most part, it's just totally been sabotaged. Like By what it thinks you want to see? I assume so. Mm -hmm. I think, Simon, his point was more like, listen, if you want, you can go out and purchase a Garmin GPS system. And you're going to assume that Garmin isn't raping your shit because you bought it, right? Or you can use Google Maps for free. And in return, Google Maps is going to use the info as to where you've been. So like, okay, and they're going to create a profile saying this guy went to, like this guy kept using Cabela's. He's clearly worked with fucking Cabela's a bunch. But you know what I mean? It says, okay, this guy's gone to three sporting goods stores, four restaurants. It creates a profile. And then based on my, spe you know, I, I get what he's saying. And that some things like, yeah, you're going to give up a bit of privacy, but A, you don't have to use that fucking thing. That's You don't have to use Google Maps. No one's forcing you to use, like Joe said, I could use the Apple one. It just fucking sucks. But why do you, I, I still don't get why, like you're, you're giving them your eyeballs, right? That's the exchange. Well, there's no ads on, listen, Google Maps, there's no ads. There's zero there's advertising There's no ads there. on Google Maps. That's right. So, so there are, put something on but, there. But hear me out. There's certain, this is the point is there's certain apps you have on your phone where they don't have ads and they, and it's free and you use it and it's free because they have to do some back end mining to sell to advertisers some sort of info, right? Mm -hmm. And that's yeah. his point is like, nothing is for free. Ask ass or grass. Nobody <laughs> rides for fucking free. What? <laughs> I'm just laughing. Okay. Well, I'm just saying, I think I, his point is like, advertising pays for all the shit it you use on the internet. It. There's no way around that. Without, remember we had this talk about we've mines agreed, last we've week? We agreed to this, so we already. We spoke about mines last week and you were like, well, they could expand. And I was like, well, how do they expand? And you were like, they sell ad space and they sell, you know, it. Yeah, again, I have no problem with selling the ad space. It's the double selling your information to the next company. Like, if they want, you see. How about this? Can I ask you a question? They should be getting information from me to find out what ads, yeah, I guess work best. on my, And then I should make that decision, right? I either want to pay for that service or I accept their advertisement. Well, you pay a dollar a month not to see any ads. Somewhere. Like Kamar's a good example. He doesn't want ads. He pays 20 bucks and a month. I cannot for tell you how good it is. Yes. You've mentioned it every week. You know, that's a good example, but he doesn't know. They might still be mining the shit out of his data. And we we all, care. we all just assume though, and right or wrong. Most people are going to assume this, that maps is a free service that you get. Yeah. There is no, um, like it's somewhere in the fine print where you're agreeing to give them anything for mm -hmm. the ability to use maps. Say that again. <laughs> so you're using maps. Yeah. You're, um, you're agreeing somewhere in the terms of agreement yeah. to give them your information. Okay. That's what's paying for apps. Yeah. You have, most people don't have any clue that they're doing that. Uh huh. You think you're just using a free app that's given to you free on your phone because you paid for an Apple phone. Yeah. I mean, the problem is the look, the problem is, is that they actually do lay it out. We all just skip it. No, I, I realize yeah. that, but who, again, nobody reads that. I know everybody just agrees to it. Yeah. I mean, listen, I was taught at a very young age that you should absolutely never sign something unless you've read it top to bottom. And I don't think ever once digitally have I read anything. Well, no, to they bottom. make those things so long though. Yeah. They're 40 some pages. And they're written they, in pure they, fucking they know that. legal speak. Yeah, I get it. And Apple does that too. I guess I'm just coming around to the fact that like Apple is, they're a little better, I guess, but they're terrible too. Listen, we've given all these companies too much power. Yeah. There's no way that like every company you go to, they make you sign something. And it's never you have some contract you can give them and say, well, guess what? If your work is shoddy or if this thing doesn't work, I immediately get my fuck. You know what I mean? It's just like, there's this weird agreement where like you as the buyer are protected somehow. When in reality, you're not. These companies fuck you all the time. Well, I mean, look. There isn't a product. There isn't a product. You're yeah. the product. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's stupid. I have a lot more, but. No, we got to end we'll this. We'll do it in the uh, post show. Yeah. Uh, I give it a one. I give it a one. I give it a one and a half. I'm being harsh. No, I give it a one. All right. Why? Because he agreed with you. you? No, what? <laughs> yeah. And, and I was like, and you go, and I give it a one, two. No. 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 No, 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 agree no agreements this week. We all disagree. Um, that's it. What a show. If you made it this far, thank you so much. We appreciate the shit of you. Thanks so much to BetterHelp. 
Uh, be sure to go check them out if you think you need some help. They are the best online, um, what would it be, therapists? Counseling? Help. They're the best help you can get. If you need to talk to someone, it's discreet. You don't have to do it on video. You can just do voice. Uh, you can do voice or video. Uh, and you can get 10% off your first month if you use our code. Go to betterhelp.com slash J-R-E-E. Don't forget to check them out. Also, um, we have some uh, social media stuff. You can follow us on Instagram and Twitter at J-R-E-E Podcast. You can follow Kamar on Instagram. At Kamar Babar. You can follow me on Instagram at Floydy, F-L-O-I-D with five E's. Uh, there's a YouTube if you want to watch the show. Uh, it's youtube.com slash J-R-E-E Podcast. Go sign up, subscribe, maybe drop a comment and a like, maybe watch at least 10 minutes of a video. I don't know, that'd be helpful. Um, the Patreon, of course, if you want to support the show, you can do so for as little as $5 a month. It's patreon.com slash J-R-E-E Podcast. We just released the long-awaited return of uh, This Won't Age Well. That's crazy feedback, eh? I was just loving it. It's so hot. Yeah, there you go. It's back. It's super hot. <laughs> I go don't know. Go don't check know. it out. Um, Patreon.com slash JREE podcast. If you do want to support the show, you can go do that. Uh, and there's also merch. We are not Joe Rogan.com. Simon keeps promising me these t shirt designs, and I keep being disappointed. Living with somebody who got COVID. Go fucking figure. Wow, look at this guy. Living with someone who got COVID. Anyway, that's a show. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, we love the shit out of you. We hope you have a great week great weekend stay safe out there and as usual keep your eyes open